Bob the Neckbeard. Can he break things? Yes, he can. Bob the Neckbeard, part one. How not to make a first impression. Probably by singing Bob the Neckbeard. <laughs> uh, hello everyone. Long time lurker and first time poster here. I thought I should finally share my unfortunate experiences with the Neckbeard with you all. Maybe we should take a look at our cast first, however. Night Lighten, that is R.O.P. Yours truly, 15 at the time of this story. Short, rather shy and quiet. Loves gaming, into anime. Just go about my day doing what I love and not worrying what others think about it. Vibe, mood, yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay around strangers. And talking is okay. She will never speak the first word, however and she doesn't like being touched by unfamiliar people. Usually wears clothing that is more for comfort than for appearance. Bob is of course our titular neckbeard, also 15 or 16 at this time. Tall, chubby, sweaty, and hair greasier than a warehouse of old chip pans. Oh, like fries. I think we've gone across the pond, didn't it? <laughs> he always wore the same few t-shirts, with game logos, characters, references on them, and they were all stained with substances currently unknown to science. Sweat that could be used as a weapon to clear out a room, questing to make Lady Night Lighten his milady. That brings us to Mr. Sir, who is OP's math teacher and form tutor. Cool guy, he knows what kind of person I am. So that's it. We'll get a little bit of backstory. I had shared maths classes with Bob for years, but we hadn't been seated next to each other until this story started, so we never really interacted. At the start of the new academic year, about September 1st-ish, our maths group had a move around with seats, and this was the kind of class where you were assigned a seat. My maths teacher was also my form tutor, so he allowed me to stay where I normally sit during form because, you know, he was cool like that. Unfortunately, I did not know the horrors that would be in store once Bob was assigned to the seat beside mine. My seat was at the end of a desk. Well, that is unfortunate. He's got you cornered. <laughs> there would be about a five to ten minute gap between end of form and the beginning of lessons, and with all but one of my maths lessons being at the start of the day, I would be spending a lot of time sitting around waiting for the class to arrive and for the lesson to start. I'd usually bring a book or something to pass the time and on this particular fateful day, I decided to read one of the volumes of Death Note. Oh, that is like catnip for neckbeards. <laughs> we should know this by now. Although this was, you know, almost a decade ago, so neckbeards relatively new thing. Anyways, a few minutes early, Bob rocked up to the door and entered. Hey, where's my new seat? Bob blared out, obnoxiously loud. It's just over there, next to OP, Mr. Sir said after he consulted the seating plan with a slight tinge of annoyance in his voice. Before I knew it, this small planet had moved across the room and plonked himself down right next to me. The smell was not pleasant, but I managed to keep my eyes on Death Note. That book's only gonna keep you safe for so long, OP. Oh my goodness, I recoil slightly at the sudden squeal in my ear, and then look at Bob. Hey, you like Death Note too? He says again, far too loudly. Uh, I stay silent and nod at him. <laughs> my, my name's Bob. Your name escapes me. What is it? He asks. I'm Night Lighten, OP says quietly as she turns back to her reading. Oh, what a beautiful name, m'lady. <laughs> yeah, right out the gate. There you go. Why don't you take a note from Death Note and try eating some apples instead of Cheetos, right? <laughs> he says this as he outstretches his arm for a handshake. First contact with his hand instantly covers my hand with his sweat. Uh, and he gives the sweat seeps into OP's pores as Bob gives a far too hard handshake. I discreetly wipe my hand on my skirt 
The handshake was where I got to get a real good look at him. We all wear uniforms, but his white shirt is stained and creased all over. I quickly turned back and just tried to continue my reading. Out of the corner of my eye, I see him reach into his bag, pull out one of those replica death notes, and place it on the table. He then, rather roughly, nudges my arm. Hey, look at this! <laughs> Pretty cool, right? He says with a huge grin that is borderline smug. Yeah, I have one too, <laughs> I say, in the most uninterested tone I can muster. Torpedo at SS Bob's ego confirmed. Direct hit. Oh, yeah. he said, sounding defeated. I'll be real with you at this point, OP's not winning any points. I feel bad for Bob. He's trying to make a human connection. What's wrong with that, OP? Oh, he smells bad. You've judged Bob before you've even gotten to know him. So, the start of the lesson is drawing close with the rest of the students filing in, so I put away my book and wait. I see Bob writing in the replica death note. He sees this and puts a flabby arm across to cover what it is he's writing for a while, before shoving it right in front of me. Surprise! <laughs> I look down to see that he's written my name in large letters. Oh, snap! While I'm a little weirded out, I fake a small chuckle and pass it back to him. The lady laughed at his thing. Uh, Move to phase two. Now he chuckles. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. I would never want anyone as cute as you to die. <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> uh, thank you, question mark. He says this as he gives my arm a playful push as if we were a married couple in some cheesy TV ad. This is the second step of the Dennis method. He is now engaging in physical contact. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks, I say back, not knowing what else to say. Really, there's no correct way to respond to that. <laughs> Throughout that lesson, I constantly see Bob glancing my way and staring at me. It is seriously pretty weird but not as weird as when he had to squeeze past me and put his fat little hands on my shoulder uh, for balance while moving his large frame from one side of my seat to the other. On his way back, he damn near knocked me straight off my seat as he barged past, which he never apologized for. Yeah, Bob is looking worse and worse by the moment. Go off, OP. <laughs> See, the, the introduction is written with hindsight in mind. Now all the dirt is starting to spill out, and I think we have ourselves another very derpy neckbeard. I'm so excited for this one, you guys. <laughs> I am praying for this lesson to end, as it was both mentally and physically tiring to be next to Bob for so long. Finally, the bell rings, and I put my things away. Bob does the same, but he waits for me to finish. And once I have, he walks with me. He walks with me all the way to my next lesson, even though, although I didn't know this back then, his next lesson was on the other side of the school. I mean, good, maybe he'll have to run to get there. <laughs> maybe it'll help about fitness-wise in ways we couldn't predict. Uh, have fun and learn lots, he says with a creepy grin. Thanks, I say quietly. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> but just before I'm able to go into the classroom to escape, he puts a hand on my shoulder. At lunch, you should come and hang out with my friends. Uh, I'll save you a seat next to me, he says with an even creepier wink. Yeah, but pass. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I say, trying to imply that what I actually mean is, no, not even if you were the last guy on Earth. He smiles at me and gives me a tight hug. Ugh. I lock my arms by my side as, as I said at the top, I don't like being touched by unfamiliar people. I am forced to breathe in the essence of neckbeard sweat and it makes me want to puke. <laughs> After he lets go, I quickly say bye and just head into the lesson as quickly as I possibly could. In the next episode, Bob feels defeated when Milady chills with her own friends and gets jealous of one of the group's members. Already, like, oppressively possessive, this is the first day we've met, dude. 
As far as the hug goes, I would have asked him to please not do that. But I understand, you know, 15, 16, it's an awkward time, both for OP and for Bob. Although it does seem to me like OP is coping with it far better than Bob is. So let's get into the second part and watch it devolve even further. Bob the Neckbeard, part two. Bob makes Milady's best friend his enemy. Yeah, just teleport behind her, bro. Oh my, what motion to do? <laughs> Naughty? Nothing personal, Milady. Baka. <laughs> All right, I'm back with the next installment of the unfortunate tales of Bob. Part one is here if you'd like to read it again, although I just read it to you. Night Lighten is R.O.P. Yours truly, 15, reserved and quiet for the most part, and unfortunately small at a pint size 5 foot 4. Very into video games and anime, possibly being considered neckbeard bait. Bob is the man of the hour himself, 6 feet of rotund horror. 15 or 16 at the time, sweats like a pig in a butcher shop, and has probably never heard the word deodorant in his life. It's antiperspirant. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Always sports some tatty clothes, covered in creases and or stains, insanely creepy and far too touchy, definitely has the small beginnings of a neck beard forming. Rosa is a new character, one of OP's best friends and partners in crime, 14 at the time, we've known each other for years, even shorter than I at a teeny tiny 5 foot 2, a lot more vocal than I am, and is a nice girl, until someone pushes her buttons. Doesn't share the same interests in anime as I do, but we enjoy playing video games together. By the end of this chapter, she becomes one of Bob's enemies. Oh no, he's gonna write your name in a book that he bought at Hot Topic. Look out! <laughs> Nate is another close friend of mine, also 15. No relationship between us outside of friendship. We had to both make that very clear to a certain someone many times. He likes a lot of the same anime and video games that I do, mostly by introducing each other to things that we like. He had blonde hair in a ponytail, which earned him the nickname Zero, after the Mega Man X character who also sports a long blonde ponytail. I mean, did he really earn that nickname? I had to start a whole YouTube channel to finally get a cool nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Nate was of course one of the main targets of Bob's criticism, and with that, let us begin. After Bob had forced me into that hug, and asked me to sit with his friends at lunch, I managed to avoid him for a while by chilling with the regulars. Rosa, Nate, a few other familiar faces, and I really did think that I had gotten away with it until Bob finally sleuthed me out. Hey, hey OP, I thought you said you'd come and sit with my friends. He said this with a sort of disappointment in his tone. No, I said maybe. I didn't say yes, I said back to him. I just thought you'd want to change from this lot. He was trying his hardest to sound mysterious or something. I could see Rosa and Nate exchange a look of, is this guy for real? <laughs> Bob, you wouldn't even know if I was bored of my friends or not. We only met this morning, I said. I felt kind of bad, but hey, I had to be frank with him, otherwise he wouldn't get the picture. There you go, OP, better late than never. Uh, fine, uh, okay then, he admitted defeat before waddling off back to his own crew. Fortunately, that was the last time that I saw him, at least that day. <laughs> As time passed, it seemed like Bob was a little less annoying after I told him that he barely knew me, at least that's what I thought. About a month later, the weather was starting to get cooler. Nate was busy with a club that he was in, so it was just me and Rosa standing outside. The poor girl was shivering like a leaf because she'd forgotten her coat. Uh-oh. I said that we should go inside to keep her warm, so we headed into the hall, which was open to students at lunchtimes. Oh, that is a good move, OP. With Rosa out there shivering in such a fashion, I thought she was about to get maladied real hard. <laughs> Anyways, we did do this on occasion when it was too hot or too cold outside. To my dismay, I noticed Bob walk in and start looking left and right as if he were scanning the room. Rosa, don't move. 
let me hide behind you, I said, half joking, half serious. Mostly serious. <laughs> Why? What is it? She asked me. Before I had a chance to answer, I saw Bob stampeding my way. <laughs> the look on Rose's face confirmed that she knew what it was that I was talking about. Now, a few seconds too late. Uh, hi! Is it a little cold out there for you two ladies today? Bob said condescendingly. Bro, you, you made it inside, you still gonna get belated. This is terrible. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rosa left her coat at home, I say back, trying to use the same uninterested tone that I mentioned in part one. Uh, if I needed one today, I'd give mine up for her, Bob says. At first, I'm thinking how much of a tool he sounds like, but then I remembered that I already gave Rosa my coat to keep her warm. This meant that Bob had not even looked at or barely acknowledged Rosa's presence at all. I also noticed how he had entered the hall only a few moments after we did, and then I put two and two together and assumed that he must have seen me and followed me in here so he could talk to me. Just a light bit of stalking, isn't it? A, f a friendly stalking. <laughs> uh, okay, OP says back, now starting to feel a bit more unnerved. Uh, hey, you should come join me and my friends. We're in room whatever number it was, and we're playing insert card game name here. There's proper heating in there, so you'll be nice and warm, he says as he takes my hands and proceeds to lift me off of my seat. Bro, he is so desperate to bring a milady back to the nest. <laughs> Why? No thanks, I want to stay with Rosa. I said as I quickly jerked my hand away and hold them both close to my chest. Rosa notices this and knowing that I don't like to be touched by unfamiliar people, prepares to metaphorically pounce. Uh, Rosa can come too. Uh, there's plenty of space, he says as he drapes his fat arm over my shoulders to start leading me to the room. Bro, this is far too physical. What, what the hell are you doing? What planet are you from, Bob? OP draws the line in the sand saying, no, stop it, I say, as I duck under his arm and step backwards so that I end up next to Rosa, who, as I ducked, had quickly stood up, knocking her chair over. Do not touch OP like that again, or I'll punch your dong off, Rosa, who has a beautiful way with words, <laughs> said to Bob, who looked taken aback. Meh, uh, see you in maths then. God damn it, dude. Uh, you're really not getting the message, are you? I think we need to go back to the teacher in part one and ask, ask him to move Bob somewhere else. He's far too comfortable. I'm concerned for my safety. This is, this is not a good thing. So Bob does indeed slink away in defeat. I give Rosa a big hug and thank her for sticking up for me. A few people who know us saw the outburst and came over and asked if everything was okay. Yeah. Now it is. Thanks for your concern. <laughs> In the maths lesson that followed that outburst, Bob was fairly nice. Fairly nice in this situation, meaning giving a pretty crap apology and not even really knowing what it is you did wrong. Uh, I'm really sorry about whatever I did. <laughs> uh, Bob said to me, he's trying to be sincere, I guess, so I give him the benefit of the doubt. Don't worry about it. It's fine, I say. This, to him, means that he's off the hook, and I hear him muttering every now and then throughout the lesson. I think that's pretty weird in itself, and I was pretty sure that I heard Rosa brought up here and there within that mumbling, but I just shrugged it off and assumed that it was my imagination. My thoughts were confirmed once I heard, Rosa. <laughs> Friggin' dumb cow, rich, as Bob is packing up all his stuff at the end of the lesson. As we were still sitting down, I swung my legs sideways to the left, and then a swift swing to the right, and I kicked Bob in the leg. I hear his knee hit the bottom of the table as it recoils in pain. Oh, my mistake, I say, as I give him a sweet but devious smile sling my bag over my shoulder, and leave the room feeling pretty rad, bro. Party demon, whoa. 
Little did I know that Bob thought it was a genuine accident and that we're still great buddies, but that is a story for another day. I mean, I guess you gotta get your, your hits in where you can get them, you know? <laughs> I don't know if it was all necessary, but after what he'd done to you, I mean, it's kind of tit for tat, isn't it? OP said part three was a story for another day, but uh, I'm eager to get into it, so let's check that one out right now. Bob the Neckbeard part three. The part where it starts getting weird. <laughs> or when a neckbeard is now after two miladies. It was better than one milady. Oh boy, this is where Bob's true neckbeardy self really shines. Part one and two, we just read them. You can go read them again though. Also, I should mention, if you watch this far in the video, you're probably enjoying the content, so please do subscribe to Red X. So, be me, <laughs> OP, 15, short, quiet, reserved, unless I'm with friends, into video games and anime, neckbeard bait, rarely dresses to impress, just wears whatever's comfortable at the time. Or, you could be Rosa, who's 14, best bud, partner in crime, shorter than me, pretty frail, sweet as a bag of sugar most of the time until someone pushes her buttons, unfortunately is a little too vocal for her own good, which causes a few bad situations where I was forced to bail her out. Never, under any circumstances, should you ever be Bob, who's 15 or 16 at this time. He's just a tall mass of unshowered horror. <laughs> Sweats like a turkey on Christmas Eve, and always has some substance unknown to science on basically all of his clothing. He has an awful patchy neck beard forming on his chin and enough grease in his hair to provide cooking oil to a family of four for an entire year. Now is that a family of four in addition to what Bob himself consumes? Because you know that boy likes some fried food, right? <laughs> Anyways, time to begin our tale. So we had a week off from school which I was ecstatic about because, of course, no school, but also because I was able to get away from Bob for at least a little while. You see, after the last encounter of his, he went back to talking to me in maths lessons and being overly creepy, compliments from literally out of nowhere, which really I don't have a problem with. It's just sort of weird coming from him. Staring, touching, hitting on me, yeah, you know the drill. But Bob thinks that we're great buddies. Just to clarify, the group of us all live in the same town, so it wasn't uncommon to see people that you knew from school around. I'd gone to Rosa's house and asked her if she wanted to come out for a while, and we headed towards a place that serves a damn good ice cream cone. Honestly, I don't know how you do ice cream wrong, <laughs> to be fair. I hope we don't run into Bob down here, I say jokingly giving Rosa a little nudge. Uh, don't remind me, she says with a head shake. We buy our ice creams and head to the usual spot, a brick wall by our town's fitness center. This spot was a favorite of ours because of how quiet it was. The fitness center wasn't in the main part of town, and the only thing near was a housing estate, which was on the other side of the building, so we sit on the wall, facing the grass, which leads downwards into some woods. We were happily chatting away until Rosa... Here's a noise. Oh no, <laughs> he's lurking in the woods. Uh, I think I hear something, she said as she quickly looked around, but nothing was there, just an empty car park. Uh, it might have been a dry leaf falling off a tree, I say back. <laughs> Bro, how good is your hearing? I guess when you're young. <laughs> Rosa shrugs and we continue our conversation, but we keep hearing these noises and continue to shrug them off. It was autumn after all, so there was bound to be some falling leaves. It's all going fine until I suddenly hear the sounds right behind me in quick succession. It all happens really quick, and I suddenly freeze and drop my ice cream cone <gasps> as I hear a nasally squeal from behind and feel a heavy hand land on my shoulder. <sighs> I know exactly who it is. Hi, OP! I heard Bob squeak. Hi, Bob, I say, concerned for the well-being of my ponytail, which is over said shoulder. The smell is terrible, as his sweat scent is starting to fill the area. Even while you're outside? Man, we need a stiff breeze or something. 
Hello, Bob, Rosa says, in a tone that is quite obviously saying, Dude, get the hell off her. Hello, Rosa, Bob says. I'm expecting a flame war here, so I lower my head in a sorry attempt to be hidden. Uh, I'm genuinely sorry about what I did, and I wanted to express my deepest regrets, Bob says to Rosa. I know for a fact that he had no idea what he had done in the first place, as evidenced by the hand, which is still on my shoulder. But okay, at least he's trying to make amends. <laughs> is he, though? I've become desensitized to his odd way of speaking, which has become worse as of late. But this was a whole new thing to Rosa. Th thanks. I'm sorry, too, she said back, not really knowing what else to say. <laughs> That's good. I'm happy to say that we've all corrected our wrongdoings. Wouldn't you agree? He says as he steps out from behind the wall. <laughs> you notice how there suddenly are wrongdoings? Isn't that weird? <laughs> so, at this point, I see that Bob is wearing a fedora. I, I thought he was neck beardy enough, but he is literally wearing a fedora. He's also wearing some worn out tracksuit trousers and a, you guessed it, stained Assassin's Creed t-shirt. You look like a mess, go spend 50 bucks on a suit or something, Jesus. <laughs> he stands in front of Rosa and then thrusts forward a hand for a handshake. I see the no, no, nope in Rosa's eyes as she shakes hands with this beast. This is it. To him, he has now made amends with Milady's friend, who is a female. Well, I guess I better try and woo her too. <laughs> uh, you weren't doing great with one, Bob. How's two gonna go? Uh, so where are we venturing to now? He asks. That's right. Not even asking if he could tag along. He just flat out says that, okay, he's chilling with us now, and that we are now going somewhere else. So I speak up. Nowhere? This is our wall, I say. Me, Rosa, and Nate have a joke that this wall is ours. I would soon realize that it was a mistake saying this to Bob. Oh, I see. As he grotesquely jumps up on the wall next to me. I fall silent and signal for Rosa to follow suit. So it was just three people sat on a wall in total silence. <laughs> That's right. Let's make this as awkward as possible. We'll all sit here and die together. <laughs> Bob then decided to break the silence by doing one of those fake yawns and putting an arm over my shoulders and somehow Rosa's shoulders as well. He must have felt like he was the star of the crappiest rom-com movie ever, where two girls are after him and he just chooses both of them. Surely that's a happy ending, right? A few seconds after contact, I hop off the wall. Come on, Rosa, we gotta go now or we won't have time to play Brawl before Dad gets home and takes over the TV, I say. As soon as I see Bob's face light up, I realize that mentioning Super Smash Bros. Brawl was another huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Death Note, Brawl, we just can't have anything nice. <laughs> you like Smash Bros? You have to come and let me play, he says. Rosa is pretty much in shock since the start of this ordeal, so she remains silent. Sorry, I only have two Wii remotes, I say. I do have trouble saying no to people, so this is the best that I could come up with. <laughs> Don't worry, I can bring mine. I live just over there, he says, as he points to the housing estate. Damn, he lives near our meetup spot? So I put two and two together, and come to the conclusion that he must have just seen us, and followed us. Again. I also notice that he managed to drop his smart guy facade once he got excited. Okay, then, I guess, I say, regretting not just walking off in silence as soon as he arrived. <laughs> Lead the way to the estate, ladies, <laughs> he says far too loudly while pointing. I am mentally facepalming at this point, and I'm sure Rosa is too. Oddly enough, Bob seems to drag a few meters behind, giving us directions. Left there, 
uh, follow this path, etc. And Rosa motions to the house windows as we walk. Look, she says. I look in the reflection of a house window. In the reflection of the window is me, Rosa, and three or four meters behind, Bob, who is quite clearly looking at our butts, just like straight up staring without a care in the world. I'm wearing some shorts that day, and Rosa was wearing a skirt, so we weren't like covered up, to say the least. Dude, what the hell? That is creeping me out, I say to Rosa, and she nods in agreement. When he goes inside, we're gonna make a break for it, yeah? I say, <laughs> and she nods to confirm. Here we are, Bob says, as he opens the door and holds it open. Uh, we'll wait out here because we need to set off as soon as possible, Rosa says. I wait for Bob to disappear from sight and then grab Rosa's arm and head for home as quick as humanly possible. <laughs> That's one way to handle it. Bob, however, just assumes that we had to leave without him because we wouldn't be able to play a match or something. The LDR neckbeard follows me and my friend is now questing to gain two miladies, stares at our butts, and then gets ditched, rightfully so. This whole thing, just an absolute mess, but I am so eager to sink my teeth into more of it. <laughs> it gives me some real Sir Sam vibes, those earliest neckbeard stories type of vibes. Bob the Neckbeard Part Number Four How to Make Milady Cry. So, this one is interesting. I'm not sure how I put up with him after this, but somehow I did. It really does hit all the same notes as Sir Sam, doesn't it? <laughs> So, be me, Night Lighten, OP, 16 years old at this time, short and quiet nerd, into video games and anime, could be considered neckbeard bait. Or be Rosa, 14 at the time, best friend, partner in crime, sweet as honey most of the time, but can turn aggressive if her buttons are pushed, sometimes too confident for her own good. You could also be Nate, 15 at the time, good friend of mine and Rosa's, really chilled out guy rarely gets upset, likes a lot of the same things I do, usually because we introduce each other to them, sometimes referred to as Zero after the Mega Man X character because of his hair. Ah uh, yes, but does he have a katana, m'lady? <laughs> Please never be Bob, our neckbeard, 15 or 16 at the time, socially stunted fellow with a knack for making people uncomfortable ridiculously sweaty and rather large. Clothes were always in a state that would need to be burned rather than cleaned, currently pursuing two miladies, OP and Rosa. Because we like to spread the disappointment around, I guess. <laughs> Our extras, Mr. Moss, early 30s, my teacher for many lessons a week, was one of those teachers who's like a friend due to how well he knew me from the number of lessons that I had with him. Okay, but we are crossing some professional boundaries there, just, just so you know, Mr. Moss. <laughs> He's named Mr. Moss due to his resemblance to the character Moss from the TV show, The IT Crowd. God, that's a really good show. <laughs> so with all that, let us begin. Between the events of the last story and this one, Bob had friended myself, Rosa, and Nate on Facebook. Luckily, he had not contacted any of us, Besides a happy birthday message on my wall, it was the day after my birthday and I had headed into town to spend some money that I received from my family members. Sonic Generations had been released on my birthday and I was going to pick up a copy because I was eager to play it. Whilst in the store, I saw Bob. Because of this, I was quick with my purchase and left that store as fast as I could. I thought I had managed to evade Bob, but I would soon learn how wrong I was. I'm pretty sure he has like a, a tracker on you or something like that. This is far too many coincidences. Anyways, my next stop was an independent game store which sold a lot of older games, which I knew had a big selection of Game Boy games. For my birthday, I had received an original Game Boy with a copy of Castlevania The Adventure from my grandmother. Sure, you might say it's an old handheld, but I thought this was a very sweet gift. 
as it meant that she looked around for something that she knew that I liked, video games, and picked something out especially for me. I'm also a huge nerd for old games, so uh, that was a plus. I have a great fondness for the old school brick Game Boy. I was looking up a Game Boy Advance SP. My god, the price on those things has skyrocketed. Forget about it. <laughs> I'll just emulate it, thanks. So OP arrives at the shop and looked at the case which had the Game Boy games in it. That was until I heard someone barge through the door. You guessed it, Bob had followed me yet again. Hey, hello OP. I wouldn't expect to see you in a place such as this. Jeez, it sounded like he found me in a cat house or something. Just for the record, I visited this place quite a lot, and the staff were super nice, so it didn't deserve the flack that Bob was giving it. What exactly is wrong with this place? I asked him. I'm genuinely puzzled as to why he dissed it for no reason at all. Uh, all they stock here is dusty old cartridges. <laughs> they can't stop living in the past. He said that like he was the champion of the goddamn earth. Well, some people like this stuff. Like me, for example. I said matter-of-factly as I called the shopkeep over to open up the cabinet and get the games out that I was gonna buy. What was you buying? I hope it's something super obscure, like Mole Mania for the Game Boy. <laughs> uh, wait, you're actually buying it? Well, you could simply emulate it for free? Bob said as the shopkeeper was right there opening the cabinet. <laughs> Some people like physical media. I would prefer it if the price is right. OP just brushes him off saying, whatever. I got a Game Boy for my birthday yesterday and I wanted to buy some more games for it. I said to him as I headed over to the counter to buy my games. Pokemon Blue, Mega Man 2, and Super Mario Land 2, if you were wondering. I was, that's quite a good selection. But there is no Mole Mania, which I find, <laughs> which I find troubling. <laughs> I'll crack myself up. I put the money on the counter and Bob's eyes almost literally popped out of his head. <laughs> that much for those? And who was so cheap that they got you a Game Boy? He said, bruh, <laughs> face palm. At this point, I was close to my breaking point. I could see the shopkeeper getting worried, so he got my change back to me as fast as possible. My grandma, she was the one that was so cheap. I said through gritted teeth. A little backstory for why I was annoyed. My grandfather had recently passed away at that time, and my grandmother was showing symptoms of Alzheimer's. I could feel my face getting hot with rage, and apparently Bob was too dumb to realize that I was mad at him. It does sound like a touchy subject. I see where you're coming from, OP. If you struck him down with the force of a thousand suns, no jury in the land would convict you. Do it now! <laughs> Uh, but uh, could she have looked it up more? Uh, not even a Game Boy Advance, <laughs> he said. He chuckled as if he had just made a funny joke. Shut the hell up, Bob, I said at him. I felt my eyes welling up, so I left in a flash. I quickly walked down the street and ducked into a side road to try and shake him off. I took the long way home to cry out all of the anger that I had in me, before I got back to my house. As soon as I was home, I headed straight to my room and told Rosa and Nate what had happened. Needless to say, it made them pretty angry with Bob as well. The next day at school didn't go too well either. Well, it was all fine until Bob showed up at lunch. Uh, look, I'm sorry, okay? He said as he came up and hugged me. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize even though you have no idea what you're apologizing for. Some things never change. My internal monologue was saying, Nope, nope, nope! Uh, I just thought it was common knowledge that the Game Boy was old, Bob said. <laughs> I was taken aback. I couldn't believe that someone could be so socially inept and stuck up. I pushed myself away from him. 
Here it goes. Strike him down. <laughs> it was my grandma, Bob. She doesn't know much about games. She gave me something that she thought I'd like. And it's even better knowing that she put an effort into getting something that I'm actually interested in. I said back at him. I could hear my voice shaking. Please don't break down here, I was telling myself, but it was no good. I felt my eyes welling up again, and I got my butt right out of there. Just screw off, Bob, I could hear Nate say, and freaking moron from Rosa to boot. The two caught up to me, and I shakily told them that I wanted to find somewhere to calm down. Nate suggested Mr. Moss's room, and I agreed. So we arrived at the room, and Nate gave a short knock on the door as he popped his head in. Mind if we come in for a little bit? Nate asked on my behalf because I was in no state to be understood if I tried to talk. Nate was also a student of Mr. Moss's, and we shared the classes together. I don't think I'm really supposed to let students in, but I'll let you inside for a few minutes, he said. Remember that conversation we had, Mr. Moss, about professional boundaries? <laughs> uh, all right, whatever. Nate pushed the door wider open to let himself, me, and Rosa in, he looked past his laptop and saw me. OP, what's the matter? He asked. I could tell he was concerned, as he knew how cheery and upbeat I normally was. Someone accidentally insulted a family member. It sounds stupid, but it just got to me. I barely managed to say. No, no, that is a perfectly reasonable reaction. Mr. Moss said as he brought over a box of tissues. Stay as long as you need. He is a good guy. He's trying to do the right thing. Look at him go. Offering the students sanctuary? I can't be that mad. <laughs> I thanked Mr. Moss and we stayed for a little while longer. We thanked Mr. Moss and left when I felt ready to go. Unfortunately, we almost immediately ran back into Bob. <laughs> uh, you, you need to check your backpack, check your shoes for an air tag or something. This whole thing's about as sus as it gets. OP, I'm so sorry, Bob said. He actually sounded sincere for once. I realized I said some ridiculous things, and I understand why you're unhappy with me. I hope this doesn't make you hate me. No, Bob, I hated you long before this. <laughs> OP didn't say that. Instead, she writes, me being dumb. I thought that was actually a very nice thing to say. Screw off, Rosa began to say. No, Rosa, it's okay, I said, cutting her off. She looked confused as to why I had cut her off. I forgive you, Bob. Just think about what you're going to say before you say it next time. Okay, I said. I could see Rosa and Nate still looking slightly confused. Uh, thank you, Bob said with a bow. <laughs> I gave him a little smile. Uh, I think I should head to the next lesson now. See you later, Bob, I said as I set off with Rosa and Nate. This forgiveness and niceness on my part must have lit a spark inside Bob, which will be seen in the next installment. Not directly rated to my story, but unfortunately my grandmother passed away shortly after this story took place. May she rest in peace. Well, I am sorry about your grandmother, I gotta say that, but I also have to admit that I'm slightly upset that you didn't just let the whole thing drop at this moment. Bob wanted his way back in and, and you just handed it to him. <laughs> On a silver platter. And I think acting cowardly like he does is, is just a ploy for sympathy, which is really only used to probe for weaknesses. And now that he has uh, OP's weakness revealed, he's going to stab into it in the next part, which of course I'm not going to wait for. I'm super curious. Let's get into it all right now. Bob the Neckbeard Part 5 Be sure to hide adult edits of Milady when she uses your laptop. Yeah, pretty basic, isn't it? <laughs> Preferably don't do it in the first place. You heard about that Twitch streamer that was watching Pokimane deepfakes? <laughs> Happened a couple days ago. What time is it where I am? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Bro, too wild. That's what we call coom brain. That's what we call prawn sick. But it doesn't surprise me at all, coming from Bob. Hey, speaking of Twitch, I got a Twitch. You should come and follow me over there. I'm going to start streaming again this month. Hey, also subscribe to Red X if you haven't quite yet. You got this far. You must be enjoying something. So uh, 
do it, please and thanks. <laughs> so first off, Happy New Year, everybody. Hey, that's almost on time. <laughs> of course, the best way to start off the year is a story about a neckbeard and his prawn. <laughs> the cast, OP, of course, Bob, Rosa, Nate, Mr. Sir. We've met all of them before, so we're going to move on through. Since the last story, when Bob made his precious milady cry, Bob had managed to act normal. Well, as normal as Bob could be, anyway. A lot less creepery and never said anything that could be considered bad. That only lasted for a little under a month, and then he started getting weird again. I mean, he can only hold back his natural state for so long, you know? <laughs> he would constantly go out of his way to say, Hi! to the three of us, and would often wait around after lessons to say, Goodbye! to me. And it was all a little strange, but it wasn't bad enough that I couldn't just brush it off. Then one day, he comes over to us. Hey, hey you three! Mind if I get a selfie with each of you? Bob said to us. The three of us, me, Rosa, and Nate, looked at each other and agreed because, eh, why not? First off, he wanted to do one with me. Alright, cool, I guess. I saw the screen and see that he's gonna put an arm around me, and that is not cool. I didn't say anything, but instead ruined his opportunity to get a nice photo of Milady. Yeah, that's some sort of revenge in the smallest, pettiest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> I closed my eyes as tight as possible, gave the goofiest closed mouth smile I could, and pushed my cheeks way together to make myself look ridiculous. Bob took the picture and looked slightly disappointed. But no matter, it was enough for what he needed. He got his picture with Rosa, who followed suit and made her face look equally as ridiculous. Guess that must have been enough too. When it got to Nate, Bob held up his phone and looked bored as hell. Nate showed a similar but forced look of boredom for the picture. <laughs> I assume Bob just deleted that one. After all, it wasn't a milady, so it was of no use to him. <laughs> uh, oh god. Part of me takes some solace in that. <laughs> uh, thanks, you lot, he said with a smile and happily bounced off. We were all slightly confused, but we passed it off as Bob just being nice. <laughs> Surely there's no ulterior motive here. <laughs> Little did I know that he would have a use for some of those pictures. Fast forward to a few days, maybe a week later. A lot of our maths lessons were done on computers or laptops for that time. Bob had negotiated with Mr. Sir if he could use his own laptop from home which Mr. Sir actually let him. We were to log on to a website to do our math stuff. I was having trouble logging on. Ah, I can't get in, I said quietly to myself. Uh, don't worry, OP. I'll allow you to use my laptop to see if it works on mine as I'm stepping out for a moment to use the restroom, he said as he pushed the laptop in front of me. Yep. Almost seems like a nice gesture, until... <laughs> oh, thanks, Bob, I said as he got up to leave. Sitting next to Bob taught me that when he says he has to go to the toilet, he's gonna take a really long time. At least, like, ten minutes a lot of the time. Knowing he would be a long time, and seeing that he had a folder named Art in Here on his desktop, the curious side of me took over, and I had a peek in that folder. I still think it was not a very nice move on my part to look into his folder. It's good you realize that, <laughs> but you still did it. A lot of the stuff looked like hastily made base edits from DeviantArt. Huh. Little odd, but everyone has to make a start, right? I dived into a subfolder simply named New Folder, so I assumed it was made recently. Inside was another folder named New Folder, and the selfies with me and Rosa. Weird. What would those be doing in an art folder? I pressed on and looked in the next folder. And of course it was full of adult drawings and rule 34. <laughs> uh, I mean, you didn't even nest it. See, what you gotta do to hide it real good is make a nest of like 20 folders. 
And then within those folders, you make a nest of 20 folders and do that like five more times. And then you just have to remember the combination. But it doesn't work if the FBI comes and scrubs your whole computer. <laughs> Not that I know from experience. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm giving out hints on this. It's just something I heard one time, okay? It sounded like a good idea. I was so glad I was sat in the back of the room and that there was no one to my left or my right at this point. Bob had files sorted in order of date from oldest to newest and saw that those were saved over the past few days. Not wanting to bring up these pictures full screen, I increased the icon size so I could see just what it was he had been looking at. I noticed that a lot of the ones that had obviously been edited seemed to feature a light orange slash blonde haired girl. I wonder where she was from and then the realization hit me like a sack of bricks. This guy, this creature, had edited what I assumed to be me into those adult cartoons. That was what he wanted the selfie for. He wanted references for hair color. Wait, he actually commissioned someone to do this? <laughs> uh, that's not good. That's a shady artist right there. I don't like it. And OP obviously is horrified. I wanted to scream, but I was in a room full of other students. Out of morbid curiosity, I scrolled down and, as I guessed, more light orange slash blonde hair edits. Also featured was a girl with dark blonde hair. Yeah, you guessed it, that's Rosa. I was mortified of seeing edited versions of us depicted this way. I guess he did his own edits, which is good because another human being wasn't involved, but... Yeah, definitely creep vibes. Beyond creep vibes. <laughs> this is bad. Some of the images were also Yuri edits. That's where they wear a fuzzy Russian snow cap, I think. After seeing this, I quickly closed out of the folder and slid the laptop back in front of Bob's seat. Bob returned a few minutes later. Uh, login didn't work, I said, sounding very monotone. Oh. That's a shame. We could share the laptop if you'd like, he asked me. No, I'm fine, thanks, <laughs> I said back. I avoided talking or even looking at him for the rest of that week. To think that he got pictures of me and my friends so that he could make adult cartoons out of it, which he probably played with his dingle dongle to, it was just, it was all too unsettling. TLDR, Neckbeard gets selfies with me and my friends, use them for reference to make some edits, which he then probably did whatever he did with them. Next time, Bob acts like a hypocrite to a friend of Milady's due to fear of him stealing her from him. Yeah, and then the next step is he makes friends with that girl and then he's pursuing three Miladies. We know how it goes with Bob. Although I didn't know the, the complete depths. I'm curious if OP is ever going to address this one, because like the arms around the shoulder, the, the forced hugs, sure, it's bad. I guess a couple types of people could tolerate it, you know, but knowing that he did all this and you're going to hide it under your hat, <laughs> I don't think that's the right move. Please, OP, restore my faith in humanity as a whole and address Bob uh, in part number six, which we're going to get into right now. Bob the Neckbeard Part 6, Neckbeard is a Hypocrite, or Neckbeard Becomes a Neck Stalker. Oh boy, things are really starting to heat up. I hope this don't go the old casino beard, wheezy beard type of way. Please, Lord, I just wanted a derpy beard. Hello, once again, everyone. This story takes place around Christmas time, so for the last day of school before Christmas, we were allowed to wear non-uniforms. Before I continue, let's give a refresher course of our cast. There's OP, Bob, Rosa, and Nate. On with the story! <laughs> it was the last day of school before Christmas, so we were allowed to wear whatever we wanted to, within reason of course, but still, non-uniform, yay! So myself, Rosa, and Nate had all agreed to wear Pokemon t-shirts for that day. Sick! <laughs> all three of us are huge fans of Pokemon. I was wearing a t-shirt with a Pikachu design, Rosa had a Charmander design, and Nate had a Pokeball design. It was just before the school day started, 
The three of us were with a small group of some of our other friends, and we saw Bob in the distance, bouncing over like some odd bipedal pig. A grum pig from Pokemon, if you will. He's dressed <laughs> up too. <laughs> uh... When he got a bit closer, I could see what he was wearing. A pair of old jeans that were worn through on both knees, a t-shirt with a Call of Duty logo on it, creased of course, and a leather jacket which had definitely seen its best days long ago. Oh, and of course a fedora type hat which he was holding under his arm. Oh lord, I was thinking. We broke away from the group so we wouldn't have to deal with Bob. I do feel like a little bad for Bob after seeing his casual normal people clothes. Obviously nobody's taking care of this kid at home. That's why his uniform always looks like trash. Like I almost start to feel bad for him and then he starts talking or doing anything and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. Bob says, Hey OP, I admire the headgear you're wearing today. Nice to see someone else appreciates good headwear, he said as he jiggled to a halt. I had no idea what he was talking about, but after running it through my neckbeard to normal translator in my head, I realized he was talking about the hat I was wearing, which looked a bit like this. Newsboy cap? Golf cap? Yeah, definitely a favorite of neckbeards as well. Uh, thanks, I said. I couldn't help adding uh to the start. As per usual, during conversation with Bob, he looked at our t-shirts and gave a little sigh, almost a frustration. Something up? I asked him, being able to tell that he disapproved of something we were doing. Nothing, just... I didn't know so many people your age played that game, he said. I could tell he was referring to Pokemon because he was looking at my t-shirt, or maybe my... Uh, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Honestly, Honker Donker Hoinga Doingo is one of my favorite games ever, so... <laughs> I don't understand where he's coming from. <laughs> but OP says, Yeah, there's loads of older people that play Pokemon. I was pretty annoyed by this point. Uh, people can like whatever they want. Just because something might be designed for kids, doesn't mean only kids are allowed to enjoy it, Nate said. I could tell he, along with Rosa, were just as annoyed as I was. I wasn't even talking to you, Nate. So I'd appreciate if you'd remain silent. <laughs> I don't want to talk to someone who is obviously trying to pander to Nate's interest by wearing a similar t-shirt. Bob said smugly. Bob, you just salty because you were left out. <laughs> I was livid at this point. First, he insulted us for simply liking a game series, and then he needlessly ragged on my friends for no reason. And then I remembered the time in part one, where Bob tried to impress me with a replica Death Note. So, it's like that time when you showed me your replica Death Note back at the start of the year to impress me? I said back to him, Oof, I'll be honest, <laughs> I felt pretty good after cutting him down like that, so I flashed him a little smile of victory. No, that was different, Bob said before leaving in a huff. Yeah, but it ain't different though, except the fact that you weren't invited to do it. Bro just got like completely owned. I do like that it's getting a little more adversarial between them now. Maybe eventually Bob will realize that he, he doesn't fit in this friend group. As it was the last day, we spent most lessons just playing games or watching movies. Obviously, in maths, we were allowed to sit anywhere in the room as we were doing no work, so I ditched the seat near Bob to join the group who I was sat with the year before. We began a good old game of poker, Texas Hold'em to be precise, and none of us claimed to be experts, but it was a game that we all played a fair bit, so we knew the basic rules. Bob saw us across the room, and of course, seeing as Milady was playing, he wanted in. I'm surprised they're allowing gambling. I, I know I got in trouble for that in school a couple times. <laughs> but today, the teacher's just completely checked out. Bob drags up a chair and sits down, saying, uh, What are we playing? We're playing Texas Hold'em. You are playing Go Sit in the Corner and Cry. 
<laughs> he didn't ask if he could join in or anything. Poker, one of the group said, not breaking eye contact with his hand. We're already mid-game, so you're gonna have to wait, I told him. Apparently, he didn't get the message. Nonsense, he said as he grabbed two cards from the top of the deck. Dude, the flop is already down. You're too late. Just wait until we finish this, another member said. Bob saw this as an opportunity to leap into action. <laughs> I think I know how to play poker, dude. I've been to Vegas, he said. And we could all tell that that was BS. For a start, you'd have to be at least 18 to play poker in Vegas. No, I'm pretty sure OP, he just meant like walking through Vegas. It's like an, a vortex of power that just teaches you to be an expert at poker automatically. That's why everybody in Vegas wins so much. Oh wait, none of that's true? Okay, pokes a hole in my theory. <laughs> if that were true, then you'd know that you're too late to play. Now please, put those cards back, a girl in the group said. Bob laughed under his breath and shook his head as if she were wrong and placed the cards back into the deck. When it came to the next game, Bob was handed his cards and the flop was shown. In the end, all of us had folded aside from Bob and one of the other guys in the group. Their cards were shown. Get in, the guy from the group said with a little victory punch to the air. I looked over at Bob. It appears that I have won, Bob said at the same time as the guy in the group that had given his victory line. The guy looked at Bob in slight confusion. No, look, I won, he said as he pointed out his cards to Bob. The guy had gotten a flush. No, you are wrong. I have a straight. That's higher than a flush. <laughs> what? Uh, no, no, sir, it isn't. Bob said this confidently as he crossed his arms. It took us a good five or ten minutes and a Google search to finally convince him that he was, in fact, wrong. <laughs> Bro, you're a joke. Get him from the table. I'm happy to teach you, but you can't teach someone so arrogant. Bleh, whatever, Bob said as he tossed his cards onto the table and left yet again in a bit of a huff. Nice, nice. Gotta love when the trash takes itself out. I thought that'd be the last that I would see of him that day, but uh, apparently not. We left school early, so my bus wasn't there to pick me up. My house isn't too far away, so I was just gonna walk home. Rosa lived close to the school, and Nate lived near town, so I was able to walk with the both of them for a little bit. I said my goodbyes and wished them a Merry Christmas as they reached their homes. Seeing as I was in town, and that it was the quiet hour at McDonald's, I decided it wouldn't hurt to pop in, grab a bite to eat, and maybe play on my 3DS for a little while. Big mistake. You still didn't take that tracker out of your shoe, did you? <laughs> Bob slams his way through the double doors and went straight for the counter. Odd, I thought, as I'm sure he wouldn't have any reason to be coming this way. As I learned in part three, Bob lived near our town's fitness center, which was west of the school, while where I was currently sitting, and also my house, was south from the school. I just assumed he visited McDonald's often due to how big he was, and how the grease and condiment stains covered most of his clothing. I repositioned myself at the table, in a way that would put a building beam in the way of Bob and myself so that I was out of view. Bro, wrap that sandwich up and run out the door right now. Do it, go! <laughs> it was all no good. Bob must have seen me when he came in, as he came right over and plopped himself right down at the table on the seat opposite to me. Uh, OP, fancy running into you here, he said to me. Yeah. Real big coincidence there, Bob. Hello, Bob, OP says, <laughs> briefly looking away from the 3DS screen before looking right back to it and continuing my game. Uh, what are you playing? He asked. Fair question. If he hadn't asked with a mouthful of food. Legend of Zelda, I replied. I realized I wasn't going to get anywhere in this game if Bob was talking to me like he normally does, so I saved my game and turned it off now focusing on my food. Please just tell him you want to be left alone. <laughs> but of course Bob has a riveting topic of conversation. 
saying, uh, you are rather captivated by those retro games, aren't you? He said, almost sounding as if he was trying to make it out as being a bad thing. I just replied with a simple nod and then ate a few more fries. Is that all you're having? He asked me. In front of me was a large fry and a drink. I didn't think that it was too little a meal, but it did seem small, I guess, compared to what Bob was eating, which looked like a mountain of variously colored boxes containing countless amounts of different food. Maybe that's why Bob's family's poor. He spends all their money at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> OP just says, yeah, I get full kind of easy. Bob gave me this weird look, which I assumed was him trying to look sympathetic. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, uh, feel free to help yourself to any of mine if you finish and still feel famished, he said. I wouldn't want any of that food anywhere near me, as throughout the conversation, he'd been licking his fingers and then grabbing for food. Uh, saliva fries. <laughs> Uh, thanks, but no thanks, Bob. I think I'll be okay, I said back, as I looked to see how many fries I had left to eat. The container was almost empty. I was almost in the clear, but there was no way that he would be able to finish all of that before I left. I was almost in the clear, because there was no way that Bob would be able to finish all of that food before I got up and left. It's a good plan. Too bad Bob is gonna arm swipe it all into his backpack the second she stands up. <laughs> I can take this to go. <laughs> so OP finishes her fries and slurps up the last of the lemonade before standing up and slinging her bag over her shoulder. I should get going now. Merry Christmas. See you next year, I said as I turned around to leave. Bob gave a full arm wave as his mouth was still full. Hey, see you later, OP. Have a Merry Christmas, he yelled across the restaurant. I cringed slightly, hoping that the other patrons didn't think I was best buds with him or something. As I set off for home, I walked past the window of McDonald's where Bob and I had been sat moments ago, and I was surprised to see that the table was empty. <laughs> huh. I assume Bob must have had to move to a different table out of the sunlight or he'd burn up like a vampire. After a while of walking, I finally arrived home. For the record, where I live is quite an out of the way area, off of a main road. So really, anyone who walks through here are generally people that live here. My parents were still at work, my brother was out, so I had the whole house to myself. Sweet, <laughs> when I got in, I immediately sat in the front room with the big TV, sweet, and popped in an anime DVD, meh. <laughs> Everything was going great. I was watching anime on the big TV, I had two weeks off of school, and I had Christmas to come. And then, I was horrified while looking out of my window. Bob was walking past my house. I told you he was gonna pack that to go. He ain't about to let Milady escape his sight. <laughs> I was pretty shaken. He must have trailed behind and followed me home, but lost track shortly before I got to my house. I was reassured by the fact that he was walking past my house, so at least he didn't know exactly where I lived. Still, I turned off the TV and bolted upstairs. My room overlooks the path, so I watched him walk all the way down which leads to a dead end, and then walk all the way back up. It went right past my house without even looking, so I was solidly reassured that he only knew the street on which I lived, which I thought was no harm. Bro, you are currently being stalked. <laughs> I don't know what I can really tell you except please start a paper trail right now. Anyway, unfortunately, Bob also knew about our meetup spot on the wall, mentioned in part three, but I'd soon find out that he would find excuses to walk past that wall as much as possible to see if he could find us there, but that's a story for another day, I suppose. How can one human be this sus? <laughs> I don't understand. I am glad to see that, you know, 
OP is finally gaining some gumption, at least enough to tell Bob off or, or ditch him when she doesn't want to hang out with him. But really, I think you just need like a, a long, hard face to face conversation. You sit him down, say, we're not friends anymore. And he cries and says, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And you say, no, I, I said what I said and we're done. Goodbye. And then every time he tries to push the boundary, you push him back away. I'm sure that point will come. I hope it doesn't escalate too far before it does, but uh, there are 10 parts to this, so it remains to be seen for now. Bruh, y'all could just call me a sprinkle shaker because my jimmies are rustled. Bob the Neckbeard Part 7. Neckbeard creeps at the fitness center. Honestly, pretty topical. I've been seeing a lot of complaining about this on TikTok and whatnot. Hey, follow me on TikTok if you wanna. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hello, everyone. From now on, I'll just copy and paste the cast list so I don't have to keep typing the thing out slightly differently every time. I don't really bother with reading it no more. If you would like to hear me read it, it's in the previous videos, that link in the description. So yeah, the cast, Night Lighten, R.O.P., Bob, the Neckbeard, Rosa, O.P.'s best friend, and it's time to continue. So Rosa and I had decided to go swimming at the fitness center on a day that we didn't have school. As mentioned in part three, a small wall that was next to the fitness center was a regular meeting spot for myself, Rosa, and Nate. Unfortunately, Bob discovered this after seeing Rosa and I sitting there one day, and he would just regularly pass that spot to see if we were possibly there. We also knew that Bob lived near that spot, just across the road from the fitness center. I guarantee you Bob's never stepped foot in that fitness center until today. <laughs> uh, I was sat on the wall waiting for Rosa. My hands were freezing, so I had my hands buried deep into my hat, which I had taken off to use as a makeshift hand warmer. I assumed that it would be a quiet day and that there was no one around, but I would later learn that a certain someone had seen me there. Guess who? <laughs> Rosa arrived and we headed inside the fitness center. We paid, we changed into swimwear, two-piece, yada yada yada, and then we got into the pool. We did the usual, raced lengths, jumped off the diving board, etc, etc. All was going fine until about 45 minutes later when I caught something unsettling out of the corner of my eye. It was Bob. Bob, what are you doing here, Bob? Why are you creeping, Bob? And in swimsuits, no less. My God, <laughs> just no shame whatsoever. Bob had settled himself down in the swimming viewing area with his tablet. The thing had a camera on it, but I highly doubt he'd be dumb enough to record or take pictures in a place like this. OP, you know better by now. <laughs> he shooped you into some anime prod, okay? I'm not putting anything past this guy. The thought of Bob snapping our swimsuit pics for personal use made my skin crawl. Rosa, I loudly whispered. She turned around. I pulled her towards the side of the pool where we were able to be out of Bob's view. What? She asked, sounding annoyed as to why I had dragged her over here. Bob is here, I said. I could tell by the look on her face that she thought I was kidding. Wait, what? She said, laughing a little, and I shook my head at her. I'm not screwing around. Bob is here. Look at the viewing area, but don't let him see you, I said quietly, even though he wouldn't have heard us anyways. Rosa slowly popped her head above the side and saw Bob staring back and suddenly lowered herself back down. <laughs> uh, did he see you? Why is he here? When did he get here? She asked. I could tell she was sort of panicking at this point. One thing to note was that currently, Rosa had recently dyed her hair dark blue and black as opposed to her previous dark blonde. So from the back, she looked like a different person. Is there anyone who we might have come with? I asked as we looked around the pool. It was quiet that day. So there were only a few old people also in the pool at that time. And they were already there when we had arrived. The truth is staring you right in the face, OP. <laughs> I hate it, but we have to accept it so we can start to change it. Anyways, OP says, What the hell? He must have seen us come in and followed us. 
I looked at Rosa and she looked back. We both had the same idea. We had to get out of the pool without Bob noticing us and get out of the fitness center without him seeing us. After a few minutes, we formulated our plan. Rosa was to get out and head into the changing rooms, all the while keeping her back to Bob so that as far as he was concerned, he was just seeing a stranger walking around. Then I was to carry on swimming up and down at the side where I was not visible to Bob so that I wouldn't look suspicious. I would keep my eyes on the entrance to the changing room where Rosa was watching Bob and would signal when an opportunity where he was too invested in whatever was on his tablet opened up, allowing me to escape unseen. We pushed ahead with the plan and it went flawlessly. Well, uh, almost flawlessly. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but even one flaw means, uh, not flawless. <laughs> we dried off and changed back into our clothes and headed for the changing room exit. In this fitness center, once you leave the changing room, there's a three-way split of small hallways, which all have ways to lead back to the lobby. The hallway dead in front goes straight into the lobby, while the right one heads towards the pool's viewing area, and the left one leads to the rest of the building. As we left the changing room, who do we see in the lobby waiting for us? Bob. He's just stood right there, looking directly at the door that we had just left from. Bro, this is so weird. I hate this game of cat and mouse. <laughs> Can it just be over now? I ducked into the left corridor and hid around the corner, while Rosa did a 180 turn and walked right back into the changing room. So now I was alone and no doubt that Bob was approaching and was going to suddenly appear from around the corner like something from a friggin' scary movie. Rosa was safe in the changing room, and I couldn't risk exposing myself behind the wall to go in there as well, or else Bob would definitely see me. I booked it down the hallway and made my way up the stairs. Oh, you split the group is not good. You should have had some contingency plans. Hey, if we have to split, meet me over here by the exercise machines. <laughs> That's how I know I go to the gym all the time. Just refer to all of them as exercise machines. <laughs> Anyways, I was on the top floor in a room which was occasionally used for parties, which was luckily left unlocked. The room was big and empty, aside from a pool table and a few chairs stacked in the corner. I was exhausted, and I leaned against the pool table and texted Rosa to get her butt up here and to watch out for Bob. A couple of minutes later, Rosa arrived. She was panting like she had just run a marathon. I think he saw me, she said. Apparently, her convenient disguise wasn't enough to fool Bob. Did he follow you? I asked. I was seriously pretty shaken at the fact that he could find us holed up in this dark, empty room. I think I lost him, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was coming up, Rosa said. Barely after she finished, I took off my hoodie and tossed it to her. I then reached into my bag and pulled out my hat that I'd been using as a hand warmer earlier. It was a little wet from the swimwear, but that was fine. Okay, put the hoodie on. Make sure to put the hood up. He won't recognize you easily with that on, I said. I tried to sound as confident as possible, but it wasn't working very well, because a lot of her hair hung out from the front of the hood. I put on my hat pushing my hair into it and stuffing in as much as possible. I knew I would have insane hat hair afterwards, but I didn't care. Yeah, escape is what we're focusing on right now. Fashion takes a back seat. <laughs> so we peered out the door and then we made a break for the stairs. I felt like I was in some kind of stealth game. We looked down the space in the center of the stairs and we saw Bob coming up. Crap, 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 up, up, go on. I said to Rosa as we quickly turned around and headed to the elevator for the disabled on the next floor up. We traveled back to the ground floor via that elevator and made it out the door. I had to feign a limp so the staff wouldn't have a go at us for using the disabled lift. <laughs> Needless to say, we got away from the fitness center as fast as we could and went straight home. It was a crazy day, that's for sure. But you didn't even have a brush with the neck beard. This was a successful mission. I'm so proud of you, OP. Honestly, I, I never thought that it would work. Obviously, stealthing around probably isn't the way to get Bob to actually leave you alone. You need to sit him down, have a frank heart-to-heart, -heart, 
but I guess until you're ready for that, the, the stealthing works fine-ish. <laughs> you're probably better at it than me. I'm six feet tall. I ain't stealthing nowhere. But uh, let's see what happens over there in part eight, which we will get into uh, right now. Bob the Neckbeard, part eight. School trip buddies, bus trip. <laughs> oh boy. Probably a less intense story than the one before, but I thought I'd tell it anyways. Cast, OP, Bob, Lyra. Oh, that's a new one. Good friend of OP's. The kind that you meet in a lesson via a group project and realize she's actually pretty awesome. Had a few similar interests and we had each other's backs. There's also Nate, of course. I guess Rosa doesn't get a part in this story, but we do get Mr. Moss and Mr. Sir returning. So hey, that's neat, and now it's time for the story. It was during form, and Mr. Sir had given us some letters about an upcoming trip to London for our year group. Rosa was in the year below me, so she wouldn't be going. We were going to visit a few museums and art galleries. I read the letter and saw the trip spanned over two days, with a night in a hotel as a place to stay overnight. Pretty cool, I thought. Form was over, and I was doing the usual reading a book before people started arriving to the lesson. It was then that I heard loud footsteps and the crash of the door banging against the wall, and I knew that Bob had arrived. This was usually the sign that I was not going to get any more reading done. He flopped down on the seat next to me while I had my cheek resting on my hand in an attempt to channel him out. Of course, that didn't deter him at all. LP, did you hear about the trip? It sounds so cool, he said. This was probably the most excited I'd ever heard him about anything. Yeah, it does, I replied, sounding as uninterested as possible. For the record, I of course did like the sound of the trip, but I was purposely sounding uninterested to throw Bob off. I think I already found my travel buddy, Bob said. I assumed that it was one of his friends that he constantly wanted me to meet. Oh, who is that? I asked. I was genuinely curious at this point. <laughs> you, of course! Ugh. <laughs> we can talk about anime and games on the way. We get to share a room. We get to go around London together. He said, as if that was meant to drop my undies right then and there. Ew, dude. I don't think the school administration is gonna allow mixed gender rooms. And even if they did, here goes Bob being super presumptuous again. <laughs> I'm not your travel buddy. You don't just sit down and say things and then they happen. How about you ask? Ask like a normal human being. Thank you. OP says, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I've already made plans with other people, I said, trying to tear away at his fantasy. Oh, Bob said defeated. Uh, who with? He sounded like he was questioning me as to who these beard blockers were. Uh, Nate for the bus trip and traveling around London. Lyra for the hotel, I said. Had Rosa been on the trip, we would have shared a room and traveled around together, which would have driven Bob nuts. Two of his ladies sleeping together in a room and having pillow fights? Ah! In reality, we probably just would have played Pokemon and stuffed our mouths with snacks. You mean chicks at sleepovers don't wear lingerie and have pillow fights? Man, <laughs> I'm disappointed. Hey, but why can't we share a room? Bob asked. I gave him the not if you were the last guy on earth look. Because it's already arranged with Lyra. Sorry, I said. There was no way that I would sleep and shower within any sort of close proximity to Bob. Well advised. <laughs> For the few days that led up to the trip, I'd get constant Facebook messages from Bob asking me to reconsider sharing with Lyra and traveling with Nate. Of course, I ignored these messages, and soon the day of the trip came. I was awake bright and early, which meant I was able to get ready and set off earlier than I had planned, Fortunately, the bus was already there and was allowing students to get on board. I got on to fortunately find that Bob hadn't arrived yet, and there were only about four or five students who had arrived so far, so I took a seat, making sure to save one next to me for Nate. 
I don't know if that's a, a bright idea. Bob's going to show up instead of Nate, isn't he? I spent the next few minutes looking out the window. Down the path, I see a figure with long blonde hair. I could tell that that was Nate from far away. But behind him, I saw a larger, bumbling figure bouncing his way down the path. That was definitely Bob. <laughs> Bob must have spotted Nate and planned to overtake him to take the bus seat next to Milady as he appeared to now be power walking up the path. <laughs> I had to hold back my laughter as I saw this human blob moving as fast as he could, but still unable to catch up to Nate. Oh, come on, Bob. You got to use your natural spherical shape. <laughs> Nate and Bob finally reached the bus door at about the same time. And I could see Nate approach the door to board, but Bob barged him out of the way and boarded first. I peeped my head down the middle of the bus and saw Bob barreling straight towards me. Oh no. <laughs> Hello, OP, he said as he stood next to me, moving towards me to try and get me to move across so he could sit down next to me. Hi, Bob, I said as I refused to budge. Uh, could you shuffle across, please? I would like to sit down, he said, sounding incredibly full of himself. Sorry, seat taken, I said, as I pointed to Nate, who was standing behind Bob, waiting to get him out of the way. There you go, lying in the sand, pull the old Forrest Gump. Slides, taken. Bob says at this point, Oh, I see how it is. Yeah, but do you though? <laughs> and instead of taking the hint that I didn't want to spend a good few hours next to him, he sat down directly behind me. Not surprisingly, no one sat down in the seat next to him. Oh, there truly is just no escape. <laughs> what the hell's this problem? Nate asked me. I shrugged, not knowing nor wanting to know how the mind of a neckbeard works. For the first bit of the coach trip, I talked to Nate about the usual stuff, video games, anime, etc. All the while being interrupted by Bob, who insisted on correcting or throwing in his two cents on whatever we were talking about. So yeah, basically eavesdropping. Not long into the trip, Nate had fallen asleep as he hadn't gotten a good night's sleep the night before. Soon enough, I'd fallen asleep as well. My head falling and leaning against Nate's. And then I was awoken by a strange feeling. At this point, I should remind you that Nate has fairly long hair in a similar but slightly lighter color than mine. I could feel something on part of the back of my head. Nate felt something too, as he had grouchily woken up as well. I turned around and let out a scared little noise. Bob was right there, right up near the gap between the seats with his hand on my hair. Bob, I shouted at him. And Nate also turned around. If glares could kill, the one that Nate gave Bob would have caused him to drop dead. Bob had been accidentally caressing Nate's hair as well. <laughs> uh, uh, you know there's a, a shrine to you in the closet, right? There's a little hair doll that's made up of half Nate's hair and half OP's hair. He comes and brings the, the hair doll offerings of Hot Pockets and Chicken Tendies. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Nate said as he shoved his hand through the gap to push Bob away. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose, he said. Yeah, because stroking someone's hair while they sleep and having your face right next to it is something that is so easily accidental. Sure, touch my hair again and it'll be the last thing you ever do, Nate said to Bob. I knew Nate was grouchy when he woke up, but I never thought he'd be this upset. For the rest of the bus journey, Bob refrained from touching either of our hair and kept his mouth shut. Unfortunately, this would soon pass by the time we arrived in London, but this post is getting pretty long and there's still a lot to tell, so I'll split this story into two parts. Stay tuned! Bob really is an entitled human being with delusions of grandeur, isn't he? <laughs> Probably the, the most stereotypical neckbeard case that we've seen. And he's been so, like, needlessly creepy this entire time. Even if OP, by some miracle, did like Bob, 
at one point. You really think that's gonna hold up through like sniffing her hair while she sleeps? <laughs> It's so creepy, dude. Uh, why do you do these things, Bob? I'd like to say it seems like he can't help himself, but I know he can. He chooses not to. He ignores every single sign and, and wonders why things don't turn out different. Ah, it's just so frustrating. I suppose we'll get into the second half of this story and see how it devolves just a little bit further. And that'll probably be the last one for this episode. So let's get over there. <laughs> Bob the Neckbeard, Part 8, School Trip Buddies in London, Part 2 of 2. Part 1 of this story's over there, we just read it. I'd recommend you read that one if you haven't already before reading this one. Okay, check. Cast, OP, Bob, Lyra, Nate, you know him. There's also Mr. Moss, Mr. Sir, and Ethan, who's a pretty cool dude, one of Nate's early childhood friends. The adventure now continues. Right after a brief plug where I say, hey... If you watched the episode this far, you probably enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe, come back, visit us again. Thanks so much. So, we arrived in London and headed towards the nearest tube station. We were all given tube tickets to be able to get around, as a group, of course. I stuck with Nate, as planned, and I didn't hear a thing from Bob for a good hour or two while we were in the museums. I thought this was great. No Bob for a while, but then out of the blue... Bob approached me. I bought you a gift, he said. I was pretty wary at first, half expecting him to whip out an adult toy or something for me. Oh, what is it? I asked. To my surprise, it was actually a pretty normal gift. A miniature Big Ben on a key ring. He handed it to me and I lifted it up with my index finger. Oh, thanks, Bob. That's, that's actually really nice of you, I said. And while I did appreciate the gift, perhaps I shouldn't have sounded too enthusiastic about it, because that would only add fuel to the fire raging in this neckbeard's heart. Bob smiled victoriously and rejoined his traveling buddies. I mean, it's almost a knife's gift, but it, it comes with loads of strings attached. It's just a key ring. I think I'm good without it. Thanks, but no thanks. It's all gonna come back around, I can guarantee you that much. Anyways, when we were looking in the first art gallery, Bob seemed to be hovering around Nate and I an awful lot. I didn't want to say anything in case it was just a coincidence, plus it was an art gallery and I'd rather focus on the art than some neckbeard who may or may not be hanging around me. He's definitely hanging around you. <laughs> He's sort of in denial here. I don't understand how we're still in denial. But yeah, also, it's, it's a class trip. I don't really see what other options you have than to sort of just tolerate it for now. Always frustrating. <laughs> In the next gallery, I quietly whispered to Bob, Bob, where are your friends? I thought you were hanging around with them. I was expecting him to reply in a similarly quiet voice, but of course, Bob wouldn't know anything about being courteous in an art gallery. I already am. <laughs> uh, my group's over there, Bob said, not bothering to lower his voice at all. <laughs> Why do you inquire? He asked again, far too loud. Just wondering is all, <laughs> I said quietly. I looked at Nate, who shook his head at Bob's abject stupidity. It was like this for the majority of the time in the art galleries, Nate and I entering a different section of the gallery, and then Bob following us and dragging all of his friends along in the process, so that he could be near me, and it was just weird. I'll be real with you, OP has been weird for a really long time. This is actually one of the, the least weird things that Bob has done, <laughs> comparatively. Uh, it was also especially weird when we were on the tube. I would always try to sit with the ends of the seats on one side and Nate on the other. Bob would almost always try and sit next to, across, or even just stand up next to me. Even if it meant ditching his friends when they found a place which had adequate space for all of them, including Bob. And of course, it wasn't doing Bob any favors that both me and Nate had earbuds in while on the tube, so... Most short journeys on there would just be the two of us in our own little worlds while Bob stood there staring me down. <laughs> uh, it was the end of the day, finally, which meant we were arriving at the hotel. 
I met up with Lyra and we headed up to our room. Nate was sharing a room with Ethan, a buddy of his, and that room was a little ways down the hall from Lyra and myself. But Bob also was unfortunately only a few doors down from us, which meant he knew which room I was in. It's okay, it's a hotel. They got those big old locks on the door. Just don't disengage the lock ever, ever. I'm sealing myself in here for 12 hours. Don't ask if I'm okay. <laughs> so me and Lyra entered our room. It was nothing spectacular. Just two beds, a little bathroom, a sofa, and an old TV. We watched TV for a little while, but unfortunately hit a dead end where there was nothing left to watch on the limited channels that we had. Bro, they really cheapen out on this hotel, right? Come on! I'm trying to watch some Nat Geo. You have to pay for the channel. <laughs> Around this time, there was a knock on our door. Oh, great. I wonder who that could be. Me, being the oldest out of the two of us, opened the door slightly. Unsurprisingly, I was staring at the unwashed, barely covered gut of the Neckus Beardicus Bob. Don't they got like a little peephole on the door? <laughs> you should have scoped it out before you just opened it. Uh, uh, hello, OP. Mind if I pop in for a moment? He said, almost as if he were asking a question. I say this because he pretty much barged the door open with his big flabby arms in order to gain access to the room. I mean, I guess this is some sort of progress. Usually he'd just be like, it's time for us to hang out. Definitive statement. At least he's taken to asking questions now, even if he doesn't wait for the response. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, sure, I guess, I said, seeing as Bob was basically already in the room by the time I had any sort of moment to react. Bob looked at Lyra and gave a short nod of acknowledgement. Uh, hello there, ma'am. <laughs> God. <laughs> You're Lyra, correct? He asked. I have no idea why he felt the need to call her ma'am. It's just the way he chose to talk. Yeah, that's me, <laughs> Lyra said softly. I could sense something was amiss with her, but I played it off as just, you know, Bob's sheer presence. So Bob rambled on for a few minutes about stuff that I really didn't care about, so I was pretty zoned out. I realized that I could visit Nate and Ethan's room for a few minutes, seeing as Bob had now invaded our room. I didn't see a problem with going to theirs for five minutes or so. No, OP, what are you doing? You never give up the homestead. Call Nate and Ethan and have them come over to your room. It's time for reinforcements. We make our stand here. We must drive him back. <laughs> but OP instead says, I'm going to go see Nate and Ethan for a few. I'll be back in a minute. I did feel kind of bad for Lyra, as it was a pretty crap move to just leave her alone with Bob. I mean, at least you acknowledge it, dude. Definitely not the move to make, like I said. I quietly asked her to keep an eye on Bob while I was gone, and I left the room and chatted for a bit with Nate and Ethan, who were deep into an intense Pokemon battle. Hey, let me know who your favorite Pokemons is in the comments. My first and second favorites are Cubone and Kangaskhan, respectively, because they're sorta related, maybe, in that deep Gen 1 lore. <laughs> Anyways, when OP finally heads back to her room, I noticed that the door was open. That was weird, I thought. I was sure I had shut the door behind me when I left. I entered the room and Lyra wasn't on her bed. Bob was also absent. Bro, y'all just got robbed in like the five minutes. <laughs> Lyra, I called throughout the room. In here, I heard a weak voice say from the bathroom. It was Lyra and I had a feeling that I knew what had happened. Oh my God, did this just take like one of the darkest turns ever? Why did you leave her alone, OP? What's wrong with you? <sighs> but OP asks, are you okay before entering? No, could you get me some water from the sink? Lyra weakly asked. I entered and what I saw was not a pretty sight. Might wanna skip this bit if you're eating. Lyra was hunched over the toilet bowl with Vom in and around the toilet and on her shirt and in her hair. Whew, and it was at this point we all let out a collective sigh of relief. I thought it was gonna be really bad. I thought it was gonna go a Wheezy Beer Casino Beard type of way. 
A little bit of regurgitation? I guess we can handle that. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I was really, really upset for a minute there. Lyra, what happened? I asked her. I was pretty concerned, as you would expect. At first, I thought this was something that Bob had done. I think I ate something bad. I ran in and threw up everywhere while Bob was talking, Lyra said. Did Bob say or do anything? I asked. Surely he'd have the common knowledge to ask if she was okay or if she needed anything. No, I think he just left, <laughs> she said. Uh, Bob is not human, dude. He is the same alien species as Sir Sam. I'm like 100% sure of it. And of course, OP was pretty upset at that. Just leaving someone who obviously wasn't well on their own. For God's sake, Bob. Well, is there anything that you need, Lyra? I asked her. No thanks, I think I'm okay at the moment, she said. And after that reassurance that she was okay, I went to my bed. But I looked at my bag. Some of my clothes, which I don't remember taking out, were in a heap on my bed. Oh my god. Oh my god, he stole the undergarments. This was all a ruse. A ruse raid for under ruse. <laughs> I didn't know whether I'd just taken these out and forgotten, or if something else had happened. Something else referring to a certain gelatinous blob in this case. I sifted through what was there. Two t-shirts, the socks I'd been wearing that day which I'd taken off because it was a pretty warm room, and a bra. Oh dear. I scratched this up to me being forgetful rather than a creepy guy looking through my clothes. Oh, so everything's there? That's the checklist? I guess that's good. But I still think it was Bob. He, he's been escalating this entire time. He might not have taken anything, but he definitely sniffed it. <laughs> the rest of the night went pretty normal, thank God. We showered. I took care of Lyra while she wasn't feeling well. At the advice of Mr. Moss, who I quickly informed about Lyra's condition. The next morning, I asked Lyra how she was feeling. She felt better after getting whatever it was she had eaten out of her system. Lyra got dressed and then so did I, but I couldn't find a fresh pair of socks. I'm sure that I had packed some. Oh, something went missing. Bob found a new coom sock, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Oopsie. Then I thought, what if Bob did go into my stuff and stole some of my socks? Oh well, OP says, I guess I gotta make do with wearing the socks that I had worn the day before. And I also had a quiet word with Mr. Moss about the missing socks incident. So you think this boy has your socks? He asked to confirm. I could tell he was baffled by the situation. Yeah, I was almost sure that I packed some, but I couldn't find any this morning. And Bob was the only one that came to our room, I replied. Right, well, I'll have a talk with him when I see him, okay? He said. I thank Mr. Moss for the help, but I was pretty sure that he, even being as great a teacher as he is, wouldn't really be able to do anything, as I doubt a teacher would be allowed to raid a student's belongings based on some other student's vague claim. And then on top of that, those socks are going to be unrecognizable within the next 24 hours. You don't want them back, OP, trust me. Trust me on this. <laughs> Later on that day, Mr. Moss told me that he had talked to Bob, who vehemently denied doing anything of that sort. And that was basically as much as he was allowed to do. I thanked Mr. Moss for the help and kept my eye on Bob for the rest of the day. After the talk with Mr. Moss, I noticed that Bob seemed to distance himself from Lyra and I, and also from Nate and Ethan, who were also hanging out with us during the rest of the trip. The ride home was uneventful. The four of us sat together just chatting away while Bob looked at us, probably only Nate actually, with contempt. And that's the end of this rather long story. Next time Bob tries to art and belittle some who tried to do the same, even if those people actually do it better than he does. Yeah, kind of like that art beard college guy. Remember, that's like a, a really old saga on the channel. But yes, that episode taught me very early on that neckbeards, they just can't handle somebody being better at something than they are. <laughs> Their egos are just so overinflated. 
that even the tiniest little poke, it's going to go up. Just a massive explosion. And I hope to see that. We got two more parts of Bob the Neckbeard. Next episode might be a, a relatively short one. I'm not too sure. I might have to find another little one-off to stuff in there as a bonus. Maybe a song. I don't know. I'll roll it around in the old noodle. Pack it in, son. Mike's going. Well, that's very sensible, albeit hallucinatory advice. Bob the Neckbeard, part nine. Don't dish out what you can't handle. Yeah, it's good advice for life, honestly. Hey guys, it is new story time. We got that cast list. Yeah, OP Night Lighten, uh, Bob, that's our neckbeard. Rose is the best friend and so is Nate. If you missed some previous videos, hey, that link, playlist, description, etc. This is a, a shorter story this time, but uh, here it goes. It was lunchtime at school and not wanting to be outside in the downpour, as is the case quite a lot in England, Myself, Rosa, and Nate were in the hall, which was open to students at lunch. At this point, I should tell you that since the trip to London from Part 8, I had been pretty annoyed with Bob, and luckily Bob had backed off for a bit. I say for a bit because, of course, he couldn't actually give up on Milady. Neckbeards are nothing if not persistent. We've seen it time and time again. In the hall, the three of us were sat at a table that was set up in the hall. Yeah, okay, OP, but where was the table set up? Oh, in the hall. Got it. <laughs> Me and Rosa, who were and still are fairly good at drawing, were giving Nate a little tutorial on how to draw body shapes and stuff. A fine investment of his time, honestly. Building skills? I'm all for that. But out of nowhere, Bob just walks up and sits down at our table. The tables weren't small, but they weren't really big either. And there were plenty of tables with no one at them, so I don't know why he had to sit there. After a few minutes of him awkwardly glancing over every now and then, he spoke up. Uh, what is it you three are doing? Uh, are you drying? <laughs> he asked. Fair question, so I answered. It's not even a fair question. You just be like, do your eyes work, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah, just showing Nate how to do something, OP says. Normally, this would lead into a conversation, perhaps even asking if he could see what was being drawn. But this was Bob. He just stood up and stuck his head in between mine and Nate's so he could see his drawing. And by extension, also, uh, be in closer proximity to my lady. God, there really just is no end to his little plots. He's a schemer. <laughs> uh, so Bob says, oh my, that fellow has a rather wonky body, doesn't he, Nate? <laughs> you need to get better, <laughs> he said with a chuckle. Nate gave him a look of, excuse me, while me and Rosa gave each other a look of, did he really just say that? I wish I could even pretend that I was surprised anymore. I'm not. You want to talk about wonky bodies, Bob? Let's talk about the shape that you're in, Bob. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you're an expert then, I assume? It seems like you know your stuff, Nate said as he flipped through his notebook. I know my way around a pencil, <laughs> Bob said, trying to sound humble, but ending up sounding like a complete douche. He's also setting himself up for a slightly homophobic joke, but, you know, low-hanging fruit and whatnot, <laughs> which could also be a joke on its own. <laughs> uh, okay, then. Draw us a picture, Nate said as he tore a blank page out and passed it to Bob. Oh, money where your mouth is! Bob looked down at the paper and saw this as a challenge, which it was, obviously. <laughs> he threw himself down into the seat, got out a pen, oh, and started drawing. You probably don't draw in, in pen. <laughs> we waited in anticipation of what it could be that he was drawing. It's gonna be kaijus or, or waifus, I'm like 90% sure. <laughs> Bob then smiled a triumphant grin and slid his paper over to us, which Nate picked up, and suppressed his laugh into a snort. 
He handed the paper to Rosa and myself, who were dumbfounded by what we were seeing, which was from the same person who claimed to be good at art. He had drawn a human girl, I think, in a bikini. <laughs> However, the funny part was how bad the proportions were. Her honker donkers and her waistline were absolutely huge. Her stomach was tiny, and her arms and legs had an odd Popeye effect, <laughs> with them tapering down and widening out again. The hair? Yeah, that was just a lost cause. It was simply a straight line for the fringe, and perfectly straight hair flowing down towards the ground. It was a sight to behold. Honestly, he should have he should have drawn a kaiju. Anything without human proportions, because it's a lot harder to tell why it's bad. <laughs> uh, no offense, Bob, but this kind of sucks, Rosa said, about as subtly as a bison stampede. Bob looked crestfallen. Lady number two had just insulted his work. He must get my lady number one's view. OP. What do you think? You know good art, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I also know bad art, Bob said, and, and OP groans at this statement, of course. I was just as good at drawing as Rosa, and I was just gonna have to speak my mind. Uh, gotta agree with Rosa, I'm afraid, Bob, I said. I wasn't gonna sugarcoat it. It wasn't good. And I was sick of Bob talking down to people. Yeah, a little bit of an ego check. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And then OP elucidates. It looks pretty off. Her hoingo doingos is way too big and her hair looks all weird. I think you should probably learn to get better at something before going and cutting other people down about it, Bob. I said back at him. Ooh, snap. It took eight parts, but this tension has risen into a boiling point. And I'm liking it. So, at this point, Rosa and Nate both looked shocked because I almost never said stuff like this. Part of me felt bad for putting it that way, but another part was pretty glad to tell Bob the truth. Yeah, Bob doesn't need his ego protective. That ego is way oversized anyways, alright? Uh, oh, okay then, Bob said, looking devastated. He stood up, got his stuff, and walked off. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> he screwed up the paper his drawing was on and threw it in the trash. We didn't know whether to feel guilty for making someone that sad, or to be relieved that we got away from Bob for the rest of the lunch break. Now we're done feeling sad, okay? This is Bob's manipulation tactic. You just need to stay the course until he finally gets the message. Although it might take years. <laughs> <laughs> a few days after this, I was sat in the maths reading room, waiting for a lesson to start. Bob walked in, sat down, and was annoying, as usual. He slid a piece of paper my way. Uh, draw something. I want to see how good you are at drawing, he said, a little to the point. And some of my drawings I'd done before were on Facebook, but... He probably didn't want me to know that he'd been sneaking around my photos. Yeah, Bob, that type of creep that likes something from the year 2004. I know you've been digging deep through the back catalog, and I don't like it. <laughs> okay, I said. What should I draw? I was expecting him to say, me, or some, like, overdone fan service type of character. Luckily, I was wrong on both of those fronts. Uh, just draw anything, he said. I decided to mess with him and just drew a big old circle on the paper and gave it back. <laughs> Here, I, I drew something, I said, trying not to laugh, but Bob looked unimpressed. Uh, I believe you said you could draw. Uh, this makes me think that you're a liar, he said. Wow, rude. Also, don't care for your opinion whatsoever. <laughs> I was just messing around, Bob. Jeez, I said. And I took the paper, flipped it over, and drew again. I put effort into this one so that I could show Bob up. The end result was a headshot 
of a generic anime slash manga girl. I slid it back to him, perhaps looking a bit smug. Oh, it appears you were telling the truth, he said, and he folded up the paper and put it in his pocket. I suspect that he probably tickled his pickle to that anime girl as well. <sighs> in the next post, the finale. I can feel it. I can feel the, the fireworks, the sparks flying. This could not go on forever. Bob's dense, but he, he will get the message eventually, right? I'm hoping to see some fireworks. That's what I know, so I'm not going to wait any longer. We'll just, we'll just do the finale. We'll do it live. Bob the Neckbeard, part 10, finale. It's been a long time coming. I'm excited. Hey, everyone. Hi again, OP. <laughs> Sorry for the lack of updates for a while. Been feeling pretty crappy the past few days. Cast list, that's the same. And now, for the start of the end. Note, a lot of the speech might be incorrect, so I have to type the gist of it, or as close to what I remember. It all happened so quickly that I don't remember every detail too well. That's alright, just give me what you got. Show me Bob being weird in some way, and I'm happy. <laughs> At this point, school was finished. And for me, Bob, and Nate, it was our last year there. Me and Nate would be going off to college, but I don't know, nor do I really want to know, what Bob was up to after he finished. Rosa still had one year left to do, but we still hung out as often as we used to. At this point, it had finally gotten through my thick head that Bob should be just avoided at all costs, which was partially the reason that I now had black hair and let it grow out long. I'm going to be a master of this, guys. I'm going yeah. to be a master. I mean, yeah, the, the, the plan's feasible, OP, but isn't just having a, a hard conversation easier than all of this? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Bob doesn't really seem like a particularly balanced individual. Maybe it's time to just move. <laughs> uh, we had from toward the end of June until the start of September, except Rosa who had from around the start of July to September, which meant a lot of free time to just chill and do nothing. Me, Rosa, and Nate took it upon ourselves to get together as much as possible. On a few occasions, we would see Bob, but we would usually manage to avoid being near him, which was lucky. That's not luck. At this point, with this much practice, it's all skill. <laughs> One day, I was sat on the wall near the fitness center, which was our usual meetup spot. As mentioned in part three, Bob lived near here, and he would see us walking to the wall if he was looking at just the right time. Plus the fact that he would find excuses to pass the wall to see if anyone, i.e. Rosa or myself, was there. It was a little annoying, but we managed to dodge him a lot of the time. I was early or Nate and Rosa were late, depending on how you look at it. So I was sat on that wall alone for a while. Then you could probably guess what happened. Yeah, Bob showed up. Great. <laughs> he appeared out of nowhere behind me, stroking my hair, being creepy as usual. Stroking your hair? No, why? Are you, are you just okay with this? You're not going to say anything? Oh, God. She needs backup immediately. Uh, Bob's neck beard senses must have told him that it was me. Could you not touch my hair, please? I said to Bob. Look at this, OP. We've seen her grow through the saga. There was a point I never believed she would call Bob out, and now she calls him out left and right. It's beautiful. Anyways, OP said this to Bob as she moved her head away to add emphasis to what I had just told him. Uh, but it's so soft, he said. Ugh, trying to give a sad puppy dog look, but just ending up looking like the back end of a puppy dog. Bro, y'all y'all out of high school now? Y'all way too old for this now? <laughs> uh, it's time to put childish things away. That sad puppy dog look, it ain't been cute since you were four, Bob. I know your mom didn't have the heart to tell you, but I'm telling you right now. See what is essentially a grown-ass man giving me a sad puppy dog look? Ugh! Disgusting! <laughs> OP says, I don't care if it's soft. I don't like you touching it. I told him sternly, 
and he seemed to get it. The hair was a no-go zone. Instead of doing the normal thing that someone would do after being told that, which would be pissing off and going home, he decided to hilariously clamber onto the wall. I said nothing, but scooched my butt across the wall to get further away from him. That was no good because he would also move. After a few minutes of me staying silent and Bob staring at me, I felt it. A single, fat, pudgy finger on my forearm, which slowly moved down to my hand. OP, listen. Grab the finger. Twist the finger. Break the finger. <laughs> I felt a chill go down my spine as I felt the movement, and I was frozen in place. I then felt his whole hand cover mine, which was resting on the flat surface of the wall. Okay, now you grab his hand. Now you snap his wrist. Do it! <laughs> it's the only way it ends. Uh, OP, I have something to tell you. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, I've wanted to say this for a while. Oh, please, no! <laughs> uh, I love you, OP. Ah! <laughs> You're the most beautiful girl I've ever met in my life, and I want to spend the rest of it with you, Bob said. I was stunned and still frozen in place. Shake your head. <laughs> I had no idea what to say to him. No. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't want to go out with him. But I also didn't want to run the risk of him launching into a long speech about the friend zone. I hopped off the wall, facing away from Bob, facing the hill that went downwards towards the woods. Thanks, I said. <laughs> uh, in hindsight, that was a hilariously anticlimactic thing to say, but at the time, I was deadly serious. <laughs> Uh, he replays this moment like every night before he goes to bed. This was a formative moment for Bob, for better or for worse. <laughs> uh, are you saying that you want to start going out with me? Bob said, sounding hopeful. To be honest, I did feel a little sorry for the guy. No, sorry, <laughs> I said. I just wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. And also so I could message Rosa and Nate and tell them that we should start meeting somewhere else. I gotta go now, bye, I hurriedly said. <laughs> and I went to turn around. Then Bob spun me around rather roughly by the shoulders and looked straight into my eyes. Oh, Pete, please, you're, you're perfect for me. And I'm perfect for you, he said. It would be a cold day in hell when I considered him good for me. Bro, this is getting pathetic. <laughs> Take the L and walk away. What's wrong with you? Bob, get off me, I said, trying to sound as intimidating as I could as I shoved his arm off my shoulder. He put his arm out to hold my shoulder again, which I slapped away. I turned on my heel and started walking towards the woods at the bottom of the hill, which served as a useful shortcut into a housing estate that was close to the main town. I turned around to see Bob, who was also walking my way, gaining speed and getting closer. THUD BALL! <laughs> he had a look of vague anger, but mostly a look of a beggar as he tried to close in. I picked up the pace and booked it into the woods to get away from that freak! I like that you identified both of those emotions, OP. The anger's just below the surface, but he's gonna use the beggar part to open the door back up so he can use the anger part on you, you know? It's a classic cycle, and luckily OP has completely broken away, it seems. And yes, she carried on running, not looking back. I soon started to get sorta tired, the kind of tired where you start losing control of your motor movements, I tripped on a protruding root from the ground and took a little tumble. I clutched at my knee. Ah! Ah! 
My knee was now cut after striking a few stones during my fall. I shakily stood up and carried on, walking slowly. This is quickly turning into a horror movie. A little chase scene where Bob doesn't run at all, but he just keeps appearing behind you. Then I heard that all too familiar voice. Oh, P. Wait. Hey. I just want to talk, <sighs> Bob said, panting. He wasn't giving up. Bob, go away, I shouted at him. Just give me a chance, please, he said. It seemed like he was on the verge of tears. Nope, nope, don't care. <laughs> no, screw off, Bob, I shouted at him again. Oh, look at OP taking the power back. You love to see it. Uh, why? I would treat you like a goddess. No one else would treat you as good as I, he said. I was internally and externally cringing. That's some of that good old fashioned spine powder, isn't it? <laughs> no, Bob, I don't like you. you. You're annoying as hell. You creep me out. And since we first met, I have just wanted you to leave me alone, I yelled at him. I was not holding back. Like I said, fireworks. You can't step on somebody's neck forever and not expect them to start biting your ankle at some point, right? Bah, bah, Bob started to speak. No, shut up. I've seen you try to impress me. I've seen how you always stare at my body. I've seen you follow me around freaking everywhere. I've seen the crap that you made of me and Rosa on your laptop. I am so goddamn sick of you, I screamed at him, and it felt so good to get it all off my chest. It's been a long time coming, years of this treatment, and finally OP, yeah, she's saying what she needs to say. Bob stood there, stunned. After a moment, I saw him snap. Oh, everybody's snapping. Snapping new Slim Jim. Somebody call Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> what a light up your life. Yeah, new Slim Jim. Yeah, I'm sick of being friend zoned all the time. He shouted. It was a cross between very upset and also amused at the fact that he tried to intimidate me when he said sick. What? I said to him. Just because you tried to be nice to me means I should jump on you right then and there? No, that's not how it works, I argued back at him. Eah! He moaned as he picked up a branch off the ground. Oh, crap. See, again, this is, this, I understand why chicks don't just outright say no. Terrifying situation incoming! Bob, what are you doing? I screamed. I was genuinely worried that he was going to, like, beat me to death with that thick branch. Why? Why? He repeatedly shouted as he bashed the branch against a tree. What a psycho, bro. Keep running. Why did he always say no? He shouted as he continued to bash that tree. Gee, I can't imagine why, Bob. You seem like a, a fun and balanced individual. <laughs> Uh, a little self-reflection never hurt, all right? At this point, OP was backing away slowly. Everything suddenly seemed to go into slow motion in my memory. From what I remember, Bob must have let go of the stick as he swung the branch against the tree. Remember how I said that branch was pretty thick? Turns out that would come into play. The branch broke in two as Bob threw it against the tree, and with nothing to stop those two halves, they flew directly at me. At least it's not like direct assault, it's kind of accidentally on purpose. <laughs> I'll try so hard to give him the benefit of the doubt. I remember trying to move out of the way, but those pieces of the branch were moving far too quickly. The lower half hit against my upper leg and lower torso, while the second higher half flew directly at my face, hitting me between my forehead and shoulder. Bro, how big are these freaking branches? <laughs> I stumbled back, clutching at my forehead. It didn't occur to me at that time that I had also been hit in the leg. 
I lowered my hand and saw it was covered in blood. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I have hemophobia. Only with large amounts of blood, however. I was stunned and frozen, and I looked down. My t-shirt had been torn through and had specks of blood on it, paired with a cut on my upper leg. It was all too much. And after seeing that my blood was dripping onto the floor around my feet, I lost it and fainted. Jesus Christ, dude. That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. I'd like to formally apologize for all the times I, I said OP should just brush the dude off or whatever. Because yeah, this dude is a raging psychopath just underneath the surface. <sighs> so, I was shaken awake eventually by Rosa and Nate, who had found me on the floor. Apparently they'd arrived at the wall and seen Bob running into the woods. From what they guessed, he was chasing me. I had no idea how they thought of that, but I am so glad that they did. Bob disappeared, presumably leaving me for dead. Not literally, of course, because I rejected him. I mean, honestly, with that level of bleeding, yeah, it, it is quite literally leaving you for dead, is it not? Then again, I don't know. Just because it's dripping on the floor doesn't mean it's like an artery, right? Your, your scalp bleeds a lot, but it'll heal eventually. Whatever. Glad friends happen to be there. Glad Bob left you alone after this outburst. Really should have called the co Really should have started a paper trail on this one. But I guess you're just glad it's over. And me too, honestly, kinda. So, uh, OP's friends got her some medical attention. I was lucky enough to just need the wounds covered, no stitches, and to let them rest for a few days. I was still woozy for a little while, but when I was with it, I explained what happened with Bob to Rosa, Nate, and to my parents. My mother had arranged to go to Bob's house to have a serious talk with Bob and his parents to tell him to stay the hell away from me. Well, my dad just plain old wanted to beat the crap out of him. Classic dad. <laughs> I just want to talk to him. Dad, this is ridiculous. I just want to talk to him. Rosa and Nate became like my guardian angels, and I became more afraid of the woods and blood and mostly refused to retell this story to people. But now I've told it to everybody and they can replay it as many times as they want. OP never has to reopen that old wound again. I'll open it for you. <laughs> uh, uh, the, that was an ending uh, worse than I expected, honestly. I always hope it's gonna go super smooth and you know, OP gets off scot-free, Neckbeard is punished, at least to the level that he deserves to be punished, but yeah. That's rarely the way it goes. Those scars run deep, so why not publish them on Reddit? At least we can get a little commiseration going in the comment section. And uh, speaking of, I hope you like, comment, subscribe on the video. I appreciate all them things, my friends. Big, big thank you as well to my Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members. They're so beautiful. I love them so much. Uh, I hope you guys will join me again tomorrow. Keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands. Most importantly, friends, remember that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you again as soon as possible. <laughs> Until then, friends, uh, bye-bye.